Welcome back. In this lecture, we will see how to build the product model or the product schema. Everything in Mongoose starts with a schema. Each schema maps to a MongoDB collection and defines the shape of the document within that collection. So based on the model which you see in the right of the screen, we are going to build the same schema as we built it before in that model. So the fields of the product can be like, start here, I say the type of this field is a string, and there are schema options or schema type options. This schema type options, you can see them on Mongoose documentation. So I go here to Mongoose documentation, I go to schema types, and in schema types, we can see that there are many types, for example, string, number, date, and there are something called options, as we see here in this example. So I go, for example, to schema type, and I see that there is path and options. And in schema type options documentation, I can see all the options which I need to build my schema. What we need actually for our course, I think we need the required field and also something called ref to reference to another table and default, which is a default value when the object is created of the product. So the product name is always required. I set it to true. The next field is description which will be a short description of the product. And it will be also a string. Is it required? I would say the short description will be required in our case. And then let's go to the reach description. In the reach description, it also has a type string but I would say it's not required. And we can put a default value for it when it's created. For example, I say empty string. The same thing go for the image. So I put say here also, the image is a string and it has a default value like empty. Now we go to images Images, they are always array of strings. So we can put it simply like this, array, and the type of every item of this array is a string. We have also brand, which is will be the same thing, string, and price. So the price will be in the way, type is number, and the default value, we can say it's zero. The next step now, we need to add the category. So it's simple. We say category is type of ID of category. So here in the product, when I want to add a product, I use the category ID, not the whole category. So I say that the link between the table and uh, of the product and the table of category is the ID of the category. So the type of this field will be mongoose.schema.types.objectID. So in this case, I need to pass always the ID. And how I would say that this ID is connected to categories table or category schema. I just do that. I say reference is category schema. So in this case, this ID will be connected to category schema. So when I add product, it's search in categories and I pick up a specific ID and then I say this product has category, for example, beauty and health. Is that required? Yes, let's add it as required. The next field we have already is count in stock. Count in stock, it's normally a number and required. So you need to specify how much of this product you have in your storage. There is also another property we can put max and min, 
for example I say minimum has zero and maximum it has 255 for example so I say here that when I post a product with minus number of count in stock then I will get error because mongoose will return to me and tell me that no this is wrong you need to put number between 0 and 255 the same thing goes for example for rating and also number of reviews they are numbers so I added them here and the field is featured is type boolean so the default value of it is false so this is to show the product in the home page as a featured product also I have the field date created so date created is a type date and the default value of it is date dot now so it's very simple so when the product or this request comes then it will take the current time now we have all the schema ready for the product and we will see later how to add product in the post request and how to get it previously we created the category schema and as you see here in the model on the right of the screen we need to create those fields so let's start with the name it's exactly the same thing as we did for the product so I say type string required true so to not uh, take so much time in typing I'm going to add the other fields because they are also having the string type so here we have icon and color the icon will be icon name for example we are using some font of icons or Google material icons so I can say uh, only the icon name and also I say here the color the color will be a hash hash string like something like I can say 000 which is black so in this way I can store the color of the category which I need to display in the front end so let's start now with creating the API of the category. In the next lecture, we will see how to add category and delete it. great so back to the real work now we are going to have the category API so in this lecture we will know how to add a category and remove a category I started simple here because the category API is the simplest we will see in the future how to create more complicated API's like the products and the orders so as you remember before we created the routes and in the routes we are adding our APIs we have here a get we will edit it to make a better way or we can keep it to get list of products now let's add a category so by creating router dot post so I am going to add a category so by slash and then async request and response then I will do here the adding to the database using mongoose and adding a new category we saw before that the request always getting the information from the front end how the user is sending the information and then we will read them and post them to the database so let's create uh, for example a constant we can call it uh, or let category and this will be a new model of category so this category we have imported it already here and we will have the object of this category will be name and also icon and color exactly like the schema so how I will get this data from so request dot body dot name so the front end must send me exactly this name so also the same thing goes for 
request dot icon dot or sorry dot body dot icon. Also for the color, we add here the color. If you remember when we posted a product here, we had something like save. So I say the model dot save and then this save will return me a promise and then I return back with the status the created product and we talked before also about await and async so let's do it now with await and async so using await and async I say category which I created it before I can say that await of category which I created dot save so in this case I am waiting until this saved and this save will return for me a promise with document or the category itself which is created and then I check if there is no category like no category created then I say return error so the response dot status will say 404 for example dot send that the response for example or the category cannot be created for example and then if there is category then I say response dot send the category that's very simple as a recap I created a new category model and then I filled it with data I saved it using mongoose and then I was waiting here until this category is ready and then I check if there is category there is data inside this category then I send it but if not I am returning an error let's start our server now npm start connected to database everything is okay and I use postman and in postman for example I created this category I said name is health and icon is icon health and some color I send it and I see it's posted successfully and I got a new ID of this category. To check if it's really working, we go again to Atlas and check it in the database. I go here and I found it already. So let's create another category, for example, like computers. And this computer has icon computer and some specific color. In front end, you can create a, a color pickup color pickup will assign to you the code of the color for example I say 444 and I send it and I created a new one I go to Atlas and say refresh and we will see that the category also is added here so we have computers and health now let's delete a category deleting a category is the same so we can say router dot delete not post and I say the route which I want to assign for deleting a category and then I say request and response as a callback and I will use this request and the response let's do it here with the promise way we did it before with await and async let's do it here with the promise way so first I call the model I say category dot there is method called find by ID and remove so with find and ID by and remove it's the same with find by ID and delete so here I need to find the category which I want to delete so by ID so where I will get the ID from I will get the ID from the user or from the client so the client will send me the ID somehow and then I will find it in the database and delete it so how I can get the ID from the client there is one way it's very good way it's through the URL so I can say here by two dots and then I can say by ID so this ID you can put it as you want as any name you want then the URL will look like API slash v1 slash the ID which I want to delete of the category so here 
how I will get this ID from the URL? It's very simple. I say request dot params dot ID. So here, this name is the same name as, as I assigned here. So for example, I say category ID. I then I must put here category ID. So before we saw that we asked for the body. The body is when we send the request inside the body. So here we have body and we are sending in the body of the request the data. But now we will send them or we will send the ID by the URL. So as we see here that this method will return for us a promise. So I will say then and then the promise will return for me a document and the document which is the deleted category. So I say here if there is category like if you find it then return response dot status dot or sorry 200 and dot json and I can create my own object I can say success is true and some message to the user so I can tell him the category is deleted and then if there is no category when I don't find the category else I say return response dot status the not found code is 404 and dot json I say success false so I didn't find the category and nothing is deleted so I can say in the message category not found but what if there is some error happened in the server for example not about not finding the category but some error like connection error or if I pass uh, wrong data wrong ID so I can say that with the catch error I say that please find for me or send for me a message that there is error happened in the server in general it's not about found category or not found category so here I say return response dot status the error in general is 400 so JSON and then I say success is false and then I can send the error to the front end to the user so now let's test this API the deleting of the category let's create one and delete it starting the server again npm start we are connected to database then let's create for example new category computer for example yeah this name we keep it the same and I copy this category and then I change this method to delete so here I say after categories I say the ID of the category which I want to delete and then I press send nice category is deleted if we get the list of categories again if you want you can see here the history of what you did before so let's get list of categories we still have the old category which is health let's delete it also so I can go here and say delete this ID and then if I go back to get I will get empty array so we don't have any category now let's try to delete not found ID for example I can say 444 here so when I send it I get success false category not found that's good it's exactly the message which we wanted and also let's make an error normally if you want to make error in deleting the ID of uh, like category or object ID has this format in MongoDB let's change this format for example I make it short like this so when I send I get here the error 
So the error is 400, and then I say success false, and the error what happened, it's about object ID because it's wrong formatted. You have here the choice to make between async and await methods or with then. So the promises, they can be in both ways. You don't have any difference. But here also is more tidied and here is shorter code. In the next lecture, we will see how to get list of categories and also one single category. In this lecture, we are going to get list of categories and categories detail. So first, we will do the categories list. We did it before already in the previous lectures. So here I'm using get method and then I'm using find. With using this method, I will get categories list. And if there is category list, then I will get, I will send it by the response. And if there is nothing, then I will send error. Let's add it, edit here, and we can say status 200 that we found the category list. Now let's get one category by ID. So I will say here router. Also, it's get request. So this get will accept the same API but with parameter as we saw before. So I will use here async method, request, response, a row function, and then I will do a constant category. And here I will use a wait method. So I will do here call the category. And there is method called find by ID. So using this method, I will ask for the ID from the request params dot id and i will check if there is no category then send the response wrong or error if there is category then i will send it with the response so here i did it quickly if there is no category then send response 500 and a message to the user saying that the category with the given id was not found and if there is category then I will send it with the response. Let's test this with Postman. So the categories list is API version one slash categories and the cat request I send, but I don't have any category. Let's add one. I have the post request here and I have the body already. Let's add this one and let's add another one like health and health and send. So we have two now. Back to the get request. I call it again. I have two requests or two categories. Let's get this category only by ID. So I will pass just the ID after the URL. I will click send and I got the detailed category here in my API request. Welcome back. So now let's update the category. Updating category means that we are going to update either the name or the color or the icon. The HTTP request for doing that is called router.put. So with put, I can update the data in the database. But here, it's mix between getting the params and getting the body. The params, we will use it to get the ID of the product or the category which we want to update. And then in the response or the request body, we will do the, we will get the data which are updated. So the same way here, async, request and response, it will be a row method. And then I will constant the category in some variable and then I will say await for category and find by ID and update. So I can find the product and then or category and then I update it. So the first parameter of this method is request.params.id. So I have to pass the ID which I got from the user. And the second parameter is the object where 
contains the updated data. So category has a name and icon and color. So getting them from request.body.name. The same thing exactly like how we posted a new category. So I will do it here. So if I get category, then everything is fine and everything got updated. If not, then there is error. So I am going to implement this logic. It's exactly the same how we have it in the post. So I will copy the same and put it here. So and I save, connect it to database, and let's test it with Postman. So here we have the list of categories which we created before. Now let's take this ID and change this method to a put. And then I pass the ID which I got and the body will be different. For example, here we have it computer 11, computers 11. Let's change it, for example, to electronics. And the icon will be the same one, electronic. And the color is 55. When I send, so what I got here is the old data. In Node.js, there is option. If you want to get back the old data which you sent, or for example, which was the category original, or the current data which you updated. Because if we go here and press on get, we will see in our list the updated data. We will have here the electronics. But here in the put request, we returned the old data. So in this case, in Node.js, you need to pass a parameter to the find by ID and update, which is called, is object of course, and you can say a new true. So here it means that I want to return the new updated data. Let's save it and try it again. So we go to the put. Let's, for example, uh, change it to another thing. For example, beauty. And here I say beauty. And I click. Then I got the updated data. If I say again here with the list, I got the all the data updated. So in this lecture, we will see how to post a new product. Like working with categories, we are going also to post a new product. So we just need to collect the fields, the same fields which are sent from the front end, and then add them as a product model, and then save them to the database. Previously, we did this part, so let's refactor it and make it with our model and with our database. So let's uh, create or copy the fields which we had in the model. So here I already filled the fields to not take so much time in filling them. They are all the same and they are all coming from the body. Let's reduce also here the code so we can use async and await. So here I will add async and then let's move down and we say we have for example product is equal to await and the product which we created the product model dot save so we have here now the new product is created after saving it so let's delete this part and we say here if there is no product then return as a response status code is 400 or 500 that it's like internal server error and then send a message that the product cannot be created and if everything goes well then return the product. So what is special here? The special thing here that you can post the product easily. But what if the user or the front end send wrong, wrong category? So 
For example, if I have some category ID and the user created ID from by himself and this ID of the category doesn't exist anywhere in the database. So let's first to validate if this category is exist or no. To do that, we can the same thing we can do const category and in this category we say await for a new category model and find by id we saw this before so i say request dot body dot category so the front end in the category will send the id of the category which i want to add to the product so here if there is no category then return response dot status for example 400 that the user made mistake and he is sending invalid category so in general we have all the fields and the user must send the category if everything is valid it will continue and adding the product normally let's try that with postman so i go to postman and i create a new api and the link will be the same http and categories but not categories we need products so the nice thing now we can add the body here and this body will be the type row and this row is not text is json so the front end will send a json block to the back end so i have it already prepared to not waste time in typing this so i have the name the description and read description image brand price category and the category i got the string from the list of categories so if you remember we have two categories i copied one and i added it here and the count in stock is 10 rating is 4 not so much good product and reviews number of reviews is 22 and is it featured yes it's true so now when I send the product, I will get response of the product and with the new ID of the product. Let's check the Atlas database. Here is Atlas and we have here MongoDB. I will cre recreate a refresh. So we see here that the product is posted already. And we notice that the category has object ID. Let's now try to send invalid category. So let's remove for example this and make it 84 for example send I got invalid category and the response is 400 bad request so the special thing in posting a product is only how we linked it to the category so you must validate every category which is already exist in the database and then send it to the post with the product posting in this way you will have a valid product which is really linked to a category when we were preparing our api we made a get request for list of products so as we see here the product list is saved with find and then we are returning it to the front end so let's try that with our changes with postman i see here the product i change the post to get and we see that we got array and list of products that's very simple let's create a get request only for one product it will be exactly the same as get list of products as we saw before we just need here to add the id parameter and let's change this name to product and now if there is a product then if there is no product sorry so you return an error if there is product then send it again to the front end or to the api but what we need to change here is not find but find by id so and the id as we saw before comes from request dot body or sorry dot params because we have the params in the url Dot ID. let's save and try it now 
I copy for example one of the IDs which I have here for products and I put it here after the product so I have the ID here and I say get then I got the product details exactly like here I would like to mention here that for example in the list of products sometimes if I have a big list of products I don't have to send all the data for example if I want in the front end to display only the product name and image so I can create a specific API which returning only list of names and images of the products let's try that now so always after we have find here find method if I click dot then I will find a method called select so it's exactly like selecting a query so I can pass here what fields I want to display so I say for example I need only the name so let's say here name in a string and save it so here we are going to remove the product single one and we get a list and we see here we got list of products and only the names if we want for example name and image so I go to this string and I add only space and then the field which I want to display for example I say image and then I save let's go to postman and we will get image and name we notice here that there is ID so we can also exclude this ID how we can do that we go also to the same string and we have the ID in this case so I can say minus the ID so when I press save I go to postman send the request I have now clean selection so in this way you can create your API's with more performance and more efficient so you don't have any obstacles in memories for loading to the client you need a list of product so just send what you need so you can create a special API for that so you can send what you want through this API so as we saw previously that we are getting a single product in this way so but the field of category is only the ID if I want for example to display the product with the category name so I have for example the product detail but I want also to show the name so it's not nice to go and get another request for the category and then merge these two requests together and show in the front end what I need there is a very beautiful way that to do it in MongoDB and in mongoose so after find by id method when i press dot i see a, a method that is populate populate mean that any connected id or field to another table will be displayed as detail in this field so what field is has a, for example a id which is linked to another table as we saw before in the schema we have here we created the category is object ID and the reference is category so this category actually is ID as we saw before so I say a string populate category I go to postman and then I click send I see that I got the details of the category so here in this way when I create a get request for a single product I assume that I am in a product page I send a request to get product detail and then I get also the category detail so I can display them also in the product page it works also with the get request so the get in general so if I want here to have all lists populated so I just say populate category of all lists of product I press save go to postman I get list of products and I see them already populated some of them they are not connected to a category they are previously we created them so here for example this product it has a category and it's connected to some category in database so as a recap if someone asks you how I can connect MongoDB tables together like relational database I just create a field in the original table 
and then I say in this field that I want an object ID and it's referenced to the schema which I created for the other table and then when I'm creating a get request I say populate this field so this field must be an ID and then it will populate what is related to that table so now let's update a product updating a product is exactly the same way how we updated a category but as we saw in the post we need only to validate the category so going to categories let's copy all the put requests it will be exactly the same and then I go to the product I add the new route and here we have product or put ID and then we will do the same thing which we did for category so let's change this to product here is product product model find by ID and update we have the parameters requested params ID and I will get the fields from here let's copy them the same and paste them here so we have all the fields of the product new yes we want to return the new product if there is no product then send a bad request or internal server error and then say the product cannot be updated and also if everything is fine then send the new product back we only now missing the part where we need to validate the category so again here we get the same thing here and then I say paste const category and then I am asking for category and if there is no category then send invalid category to the user so let's try it now with the postman I go to postman let's copy or we have the fields already here so we can change this get to put and here I pass the ID which I want to change so I say here for example this ID and then let's change it to product one new and here also description new and for example let's update the price make it 32 and that's it we send the post request and we got error here that it's invalid category so let's make the right category so we go here to the categories api and pick up the right one and update it here and then send we got again the new product so we say here the product new and the description is new and with the new price so the only thing we did here that we also we validated the category so in the front end as we will see later that we will have form of the product so when I click on edit then I see the fields already filled so I just update the fields which I need and then I send the request again let's check also the database if everything is updated and then I get the product list and I see here the product has a new description and a new name and of course also the new price also deleting a product is the same way how we deleted a category but here I want to mention some point which is very important to validate our API let's first copy also the delete request from categories so I will take this one and then paste it here in the product API or product routes we replace everything to product everything is replaced so we have now all the states and let's try it now let's get list of products get we have all of these products let's remove the old ones because they are empty so we can select one of the IDs change this to delete and send the request now success true and the product is deleted what I want to mention here is very important thing so what if I send a bad ID like this I will see that I will get error that the object ID is not valid so we need also to validate 
the object ID in all requests. So in this case, we catched an error. But here, in the put request, the request, there is no any catching of the error. We are just checking if we are getting a product or not. But here it's checking the ID, so it will hang somehow. So let's change that to the put request and make a problem in the, in the ID. For example, I remove this one, and then I send a request, and I see the back end is hanging. That's why I prefer more this way, the promise way. So I can say always what I can see, what I can get, and what I can catch. But if you want to keep this way, so we can also not validate only the category, we can validate the ID. How we can do that? The ID should be the type of object ID, which is stored in Mongoos. So here, I will start first to do a constant require mongoose and this constant mongoose it has a method where I can use it in the put request so I can say mongoose dot is valid object ID so I can pass then the request dot params dot ID so if this valid then I continue if not, then I return a response about the error. So as we see here, this is returning a boolean. So let's put it inside an if. So I say here if mongoose. So I will send also a bad request in this way. And I say invalid product ID. And in this case, the product or the API will return for me error when I am passing a wrong ID. Let's try it now. We have wrong ID. I see that I didn't return any error. This is because I said if is valid then return error. So I should have not valid. So I add not. So let's go back again and send the request again and I get error invalid product ID. Welcome back. Sometimes in the admin panel, I want to show to the admin how many products I have in the database. So in this case, I want to see an API which is giving me back all products or how many products I have in the database. So it will return only a number. Mongoose has a lot of methods. So based on those methods, you can return any query you want with an API. For example, in Mongoose, you can have from the model product any method you want to return. So you can create your own API based on what Mongoose provide you. I want count of the products. I want total, uh, total uh, price of my products. I want, for example, total or price of the orders, total sales. Any statistics I want to have in my front end. For example, I want to have admin panel in the future. I will show you that with some statistics. So for that, you need to create API, which is get normally to get what you want from the database. So let's add a new one here, like router dot get. It would be get method, of course. And then I say for example, get slash count. So the API will be after products get count. So the second parameter, it will be the same as get method. So let's copy this one, the same, and just change the route there. So I say get count, I have async response, and here I need to change based on what Mungu is giving me. So we create a constant, call it product count. And here I would delete until the end and say, for example, there is a method set count documents. So I want to see how many documents in this model or in this table. So count documents, and then it will return the count or as a callback. And then I say just return the count. So I get the count and return it. And then 
the count documents will return for me the product count. So here I say if there is no product count then return an error to the user. Else send the product count. That's it. But normally we return a JSON. So for example I say here product count is a product count or for example I say only count is product count. You have freedom here to choose any name. I prefer this one. Let's test that with Postman. I go to Postman and then I say products get method get count and we execute this and we see product count is a three. So it's really three. Let's check that. Yes, I have first one, second one, and third one. That's cool. So we can now show to the admin what products or how many products he has in his store. Another statistics request can be, for example, I want the featured products. Like how we see here in the home page of this website, we are seeing some featured products which are displayed always on the home page. So previously in products model, we had something or some field called is featured. Is featured has a Boolean value like true or false. This means that this product should be displayed in the home page or not. Now let's make an API to get only the featured products. And to make it more complex, we can have a count. So for example, I can get three featured products or last three featured products or last six featured products. Let's do it now. So any get request is like starting with router.get. So let's copy this one and build our featured API. So instead of getting count, we will say getting featured, featured products, for example. So in Mongoose, we need to find the featured products only, not all products, only the featured one. So I say here products.find and as you remember before, we had some filtration. We just talked about it, but we will see how to build a filters with the products. So anyway, so now I this find it's accepting like a object and then you can define what fields are required to be the value. So for example, I say is featured must be a true. So all products which has is featured true, then I will get them. So here everything stay the same instead only the this object. So I say here just return for me the products. So I say here products, products, products. Now let's check that with Postman. I go here, I say get featured. So we send and we got only one featured product because we have only one featured product in our API so or in our database. So if we check it here, so the first one has is false. The second is also false, but the last one is featured. Okay, so now I don't want to fill my homepage with featured product. For example, I have uh, like this page, for example, I have 200 featured products. So I want only, for example, five products. To do that, we can merge also some limitation to our uh, API based on what user is sending. For example, I can add here, as we saw before, we can add any parameter, like before we added ID, but here we can add count, for example. And then here, I will get this count. Count is equal to request dot params because it's parameter and count. So if there is request dot count or request dot params dot count, if the user pass something, then get it. If not, then return zero. So this like if here. So if there is count passed with the API, 
then get it. If not, then return zero. So this count can be this value or this value. It's exactly like if statement. So how we will use this count? It's very simple. After I find what I want, only the featured product, I say limit count. So let's try that with postman. We say get featured and then the count which I want, for example, three. Then I will send the request. We will notice that it's hanging, so there is error. Let's check what is the error. The error is saying here that unable field to parse find products is featured true. Projection limit three return key false. So why this is happening? Limit field must be numeric, but we have it numeric here because that because here this request.params.count is returning as you see here a string and this is also will be a string so we have here a string value not a number because limit is asking for a number so to change it to easily to a number just place a plus behind this string so now after we save and restart the server ask for our API we will get the featured product. Continuing with filtering, let's have also filtering by categories. So when the user selects some specific categories, he will get those products which are in that category. And this is normal filtering in every web shop. So we need somehow to adjust the get request or get product list request to have filtering by category. But first, I need to talk about something. We experienced before two types of parameters that we can send to the backend. First one is URL parameter, so the user can send any ID after the URL or in the body parameter. So we have body and inside this body there are some parameters and also with the URL. So we have another type of passing values to the backend which is called query parameters. Query parameters are used always in this case. For example, I have URL, API URL, localhost, and then I pass the query parameter. The API parameter is passed like this, so I can pass here number, but the query parameter is going always after a question mark. So I can say always that I need here a categories. So as we saw before, that we can also filter in the find method. So after passing the model and then find, we can pass object like how we did before, like is featured, like one of the field must have this value. But now let's make it as category. So this find we must have category and with the specific ID which is passed by the user. But how we can make it multiple values? Because here I can have only one single value. It's very simple. You can just pass an array and automatically Mongoose will realize that all of these values must be in that category and then this will return the right products which has those pet categories. So I can say here something like this first category and second category ID. So let's make it here like something different. So to be more different. So now we need to take somehow this query param and split it to an array and then pass it to this find. So it's very simple. I say if there is request dot query dot categories, which is this one, then let's store it in some constant const for example filter and this filter we will have the value request dot query dot categories and we will split this value so we split it by comma so we say split split the string based on comma and then it will return for me two items in array which is one string and the other one 
So simply we can place this variable here because we got it splitted as array. But because of scoping in JavaScript, we cannot assign this value or use this value out of this if because other fields cannot see it. So it's better to create the variable here and give it as empty array and this variable I assign to it this split and then I am using it here. Let's try that with postman. So I go here and I try to get the product. I get nothing because that I am forcing the API to have category. So when there is nothing, then it must have a category. So let's have like more dynamic way. I make that as empty object. And this empty object will be assigned and has value when there is params and or query params, then say I say category is this. And then this filter, I remove all of this object and then it will be passed to the find. So when it's empty, there is nothing. So I will get all the list of the product. And when there is query params, it will be filled with category, which is our condition, and it will have this value from the user. Let's try that again now. I send the request. Nice. I got all the products. Previously, I created some products, for example, product one and product two and product three, and they have from different categories, for example, this category and this category. So I say here, question mark, categories, and the value of these categories, let's take the first category, for example, this one. And I send. And then I got two categories or two products. So those two products, they are belonging to this category. Let's add another one, for example, the second one by splitting them with comma. So I say here, so we got one, two, and three. The first product is from the second category and the other two products, they are from the first category. And when I pass nothing, then it will work normally to get all list of the products. So here the user has the option to pass the query params or not. So now in my home page, I can have, for example, some banners which are displaying some specific products from categories. And also the user, when he goes to the product page, he can also filter these products by category. For example, it will be something like checkboxes or for example, some uh, pills. So he can click on them and select the categories which he want to display the products for. When I am getting a product or list of products, Mongoose or MongoDB is sending the fields with the right how I did them. But the ID, it has some small problem. It has this underscore. I want the ID to be only ID as a key, so I can use it everywhere in my applications not only, for example, for the application we are doing in this course. So I can use this backend with another applications, which are normally mostly accepting the ID only as a key. Somehow in Mongoose, we can also copy this ID and create a field called ID only without underscore. So how to do that? It's called virtuals. So with this product schema, which we created before, we can always create a virtual ID and this virtual ID will have a get and this get will be from the ID which is passed in the product schema. So this is the way how to do it. And to hex string, because we have hexa strings for the ID, which is called object ID. And then we need to enable some option for the product schema and say that when I want to send some value to the front end or to the API, 
we enable the virtuals because this is a virtual field so in every schema we can add those two or four lines or two methods and then we will have the id so if we try it now with the postman i can send and i will see that i will have the original id and the id which i want so more front end friendly i can use this id directly without this bothering underscore